Mm, that's drunk. Hello and welcome to part two of the best cheat codes on Super Nintendo, this time focusing on the one and only Game Genie. You used to be able to plug this thing into your console first, then plug the cartridge into the Game Genie. It essentially acts as a bypass between the cartridge and the console, with the Game Genie having the unique ability to manipulate the code to a certain extent within whatever game you have plugged into it. So for example, if a game like Super Star Wars is being a giant pain to play through, and it usually is for just about everyone, then you can enter in an 8 character code that gets you 99 lives, or 100 continues, or maybe twice as much health as usual, or you start the game with every available power-up or whatever. The way codes work is twofold. The first four characters refer to the number of items or lives you want changed, and the last four characters refer to the location within the game's code. I'm aware that's a very crude way of describing it, I just wanted to briefly sum it up, with the point being that you, yes you watching this, if you were so inclined, could make your very own Game Genie codes through a little research and trial and error. They even sold code books way back when that helped guide you through how to make codes for certain games, like this comment here from Daniel explains, who says that he and his brother made a code for Super Mario World that allowed you to pass an entire level with just one jump. Now that's great. The problem, however, is that many, many codes end up crashing the game. It's not permanent or anything, it just means the code you're using isn't compatible. Still, that's not gonna dampen these totally righteous dudes' enthusiasm. Game Genie! We tell you when it's over! With Game Genie, I decide how many lives I get. I use it when I want to live forever. Play to the end, and win! Maybe I want to start on level 15. No problem. It makes cool games like Street Fighter 2 more exciting. Less frustrating! With Game Genie, it ain't over. So we say it's over! Excellent! Game Genie for NES, Super NES, Sega Genesis, and Game Boy. Codes for many popular games, each sold separately. Alright, it's gonna take all my power not to talk exactly like those guys the rest of the video because they're super radical, tubular, outrageous dudes, but anyway, the Game Genie had devices made for the NES, SNES, Genesis, Game Gear, and Game Boy, but for this video I'm just focusing on the Super Nintendo. I also want to quickly address the infamous lawsuit from 1992. Nintendo sued the creator of the Game Genie, Galoob, citing that their device illegally creates derivative versions of copyrighted games that Nintendo had the rights to. California District Judge Fern M. Smith eventually ruled that the Game Genie did not violate any copyrights, comparing it to coming up with your own rules for a board game that you purchased, or fast-forwarding to certain parts of a videotape that you bought. Nintendo actually had to award Galoob over $15 million in legal fees and lost sales, and you want to know what's really funny? Sega took the complete opposite approach. Not only did they not sue, they actually encouraged Galoob and gave the Game Genie their official seal of approval for both the Genesis and Game Gear editions. Alright, enough of all that, let's get to some of these codes. They're each going to be displayed at the bottom of the screen so you don't have to listen to me read them out loud. They're also listed in the video description if you want to find them there. Starting with Street Fighter 2 Turbo, this is probably my favorite fighting game ever, so it's pretty fun to mess with the game and all sorts of different stuff, like being able to do special moves in mid-air. Some moves are really difficult to pull off, like the moves that require you to hold down a direction on the D-pad for a while, like Guile's Spin Kick or Sonic Boom. But quicker moves like Hadoukens, Yoga Flames, and Chun-Li's Fireball are really easy to do mid-jump. You can even do E-Honda's 100 Hand Slap and Chun-Li's Rapid Fire Lightning Kick while jumping, but they don't last too long. Bear in mind though, like most of these Game Genie codes, they're not perfect, and there are a couple moves that will crash the game, like Vega's Wall Jump. There's a ton of character-specific codes here as well, like for example this one that has Ryu jumping from one side of the screen to another almost instantly, now that's funny especially when you manage to land a kick that just obliterates your opponent and sends them flying as well. There's also codes that make certain moves just ridiculously overpowered, like Sagat's Tiger Uppercut, which nearly launches him off the screen, but the code I really like slows projectiles way, way down, so they just kind of linger on the screen for like 5 or 6 seconds. They don't hurt you, but if you're playing a faster opponent that jumps around a lot, like Chun-Li, it's pretty funny to see them inadvertently back into a Hadouken that's been lingering on screen forever. You can also stack some of these codes so you can have multiple cheats at once, although that's always a bit risky since since you can potentially crash the game that way. Still, it's always worth a shot, because when these work, they're so much fun. 
Other Street Fighter games have their share of fun codes as well, like Super Street Fighter 2, where every strike you land causes your opponent to burst into flames. The same applies where you get hit too, so there are instances where you both go down engulfed in a fireball, which is pretty funny. I love this one because I'm pretty sure I've seen some old Godfrey Ho Kung Fu movies from way back when, where a simple sweeping kick would cause someone to somehow scorch off all their own flesh or something. Bear in mind there's two codes for this one you have to enter, one on top of the other, and if fire isn't your thing, there's also a pair of codes that have your opponent get electrocuted on a simple punch. You gotta love that. Even games that aren't as action-packed have their share of codes, like Pilot Wings. It's always fun to mess with simulation-style games like this, like this code here that increases your jetpack power three times stronger so you can zoom around way off the map without worrying about running out of fuel. There's also codes that can either reduce or increase the gravity throughout the entire game, which adds a bit of a challenge. SimCity has some helpful codes as well. There is one where for every single thing you build, you get exactly one dollar. Nothing costs any money, you just get a dollar every time you put something in your town. This is a nice alternative to the money cheat I talked about in part one, since that one can be a bit complicated to get to work properly. There's also a code that addresses what might be the biggest issue with the Super Nintendo edition of SimCity, the passage of time. Even the fastest time setting just seems way too slow, to the point that when back when I was a kid, if I wanted to see any real growth with my city, I'd just leave the game on, turn the TV off, and go to bed, and by the time I'd wake up, a few years would have passed. And yeah, sometimes half my city would be on fire, but that was simply the easiest way to see some real progress in this game. Thankfully, there's a Game Genie code that speeds up time even more, so months go by in a matter of about 10 or 15 seconds, so it's perfect for just hitting pause on the timer, building a bunch of stuff, then starting it up again and actually watching your city grow, instead of going to bed and hoping it doesn't burst into flames. Link to the Past is another game that has dozens of Game Genie codes, everything from getting the best sword and armor right away, to infinite bombs and magic, to something as simple as free fortune telling. One of the most fun, though, is being able to warp between worlds freely. Just equip the magic mirror like you normally would, only you're not bound to the one place you warped from. Now you can just wander around and press the Y button and you'll flip over to the other world. This is really fun to play with, especially since you can very easily warp to a place where you're not supposed to go. Like if you end up in the water in the dark world, you can swim up here where the game starts to lose its mind and glitch out. It's always fun to just wander around and see what kind of trouble you can get into like this. Another more useful code keeps the first bottle in your inventory filled with an infinite amount of health and MP potion, just in case you want to make your adventure a little easier. But there's also a code so that some shops won't accept your money if you want to make your playthrough a bit harder. I've had some codes recommended to me, and I have to admit, some I just don't get. Like this one for Mega Man X, which is referred to as the Brain Damage Code. If you take damage at any point, the turbo function of the Start button gets activated, and it does not stop, ever. You're just stuck playing the game like this. This is about a thousand times more annoying than it is challenging. Maybe this was something you just did to annoy your younger sibling or something. Thankfully, there's much more fun codes in Mega Man X, like this one that allows you to do the Hadouken Fireball at any time, multiple times, even in mid-air. I love this section here with the end of Armored Armadillo stage where you're riding on the cart. You can just spam the screen with tons of fireballs. It's great. There are some great quality of life Game Genie codes out there, particularly for Earthbound. Now, one downside of this game, or really any old RPG, is how much you have to grind and how many random battles you gotta sit through. Well, this code allows you to automatically win most random battles you come across. Normally, the game does this when your party has demonstrably better stats than the enemy you encounter, but this code will activate that mechanic for most battles regardless of stats. Of course, it won't work for boss fights, but I should mention that it also won't work if another enemy sneaks into your encounter. Still, it's really nice to have this as an option to cut out some of the more monotonous grinding. If that's not enough for you, the Game Genie has a series of codes that allows you to access the debug menu. It's three codes you have to enter, then go to an ATM, and you're met with this menu here. And uh, yeah, this is just a bit confusing. There is a guide you can look up to help out with this if you're so inclined. You can mess around with what items and weapons you have, where you are in the game, who's in your party, and so on. 
So far, I've covered nothing but popular games, so what about some lesser-known stuff? Well, to be honest, there's not that much out there outside of the usual codes that simply give you infinite lives, invincibility, max hit points, and every item, and all that kind of stuff, but there are a few interesting codes for some games out there that you might not have thought of very often, like Arrow the Acrobat 2. This is actually a pretty good game, but unfortunately it's hampered by the fact that the arrow sprite is momentum based, so it takes a bit for him to speed up and slow down, which really gets annoying in a faster paced platformer like this. Thankfully, there's a code out there that eliminates Arrow's momentum entirely, which makes this game much more player friendly, and it also helps steady the camera viewpoint a little bit. Like I said, most games will have an infinite lives code, but if I had to recommend just one of those to use, it'd be for Pocky and Rocky. This game is really freaking good and a lot of fun, but unfortunately it's just brutally difficult with enemies and projectiles coming from any and every direction, with the intensity increasing the further you get into the game. But thankfully, with a code that gives you unlimited lives, you can actually see the whole game, or at least get to the, some of the crazy bosses, or the heart-wrenching setting where you see all your animal friends being held captive. Now if that doesn't inspire you to get good at this game, then nothing will. And this game is very tough to get good at, but at least an unlimited lives code can help you practice. Bear in mind there's separate codes for both Pocky and Rocky, so make sure you use the right one, depending on who you pick. Finally, how is it I've gone this long without talking Ken Griffey Jr.? Well, unfortunately, there aren't many interesting codes for Griffey Presents MLB, my favorite sports game ever. It's all stuff like walk on one ball or only needing two outs instead of three. But the sequel, Ken Griffey Jr.'s Winning Run, has a code that has you hit a home run every single time you take a swing. I've been hard on this game over the years because I've never liked that the cartoony graphics of the original were replaced with a dark, semi-realistic presentation, but hey, you can't beat going yard every single time you come up. You can still strike out, of course, and the problem with this code is that uh, it works for the computer opponent too, so it's either strike the guy out or give up a home run, there's no other options. It definitely brings a new level of difficulty to the game while still keeping it fun. Alright, that's all for now. I hope to someday do a video dedicated to action replay codes, but until then, I want to thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.